Hello, my name's Barry. Welcome to Christianity Explaining. Yes, today I will be giving you my reaction to a book that uh, Doug Wilson, Pastor Doug Wilson of Christ Church in Moscow, Idaho, had released uh, for free. He tends, he sometimes releases books, uh, free books during the month of November. And I said, hey, let me uh, take them up on the offer and see what happened. <laughs> now, if you don't know, Doug Wilson is a popular uh, commentator on both YouTube and in the blogosphere. He does a lot of social commentary along with his teaching duty was pastoral duty at Christ Church. He is conservative, very conservative, Calvinist, uh, and he is reform, uh, theologian, all that. And the funny thing about that word, theologian, <laughs> at which I will get right to, if you saw the thumbnail, I said this book is not your typical Calvinist commentary. What do I mean? Well, about a year or so ago, Paul, I'm sorry, Doug had did a series of sermons on the book of Romans for his church. In his church, they do a lot of expository preaching, uh, passages by passages, and with it, the idea to greatly help. Now, the one thing I do appreciate about Doug, he also apparently applies some practical application and not just throw a bunch of theology. Good. This shows up in the book that he wrote. He also, when he went back to make his series of sermon into a book, he did a lot of prose. He took the original sermon series did a lot of prose writing, added a little bit of things to help it flow better. Good. And this commentary is not going to be one of those uh, things that a theologian is going to love. No. It's rather, it's one that you and I could enjoy, even if we're not exactly on the same page as he is with his uh, Calvin, this type of views. So I appreciate the easy to read style. Now, I came at this with the goal of having some fun. And let's see. To get things started, you'll want to read the beginning in the first chapter where Paul gives a lot of detailed background on um, what was going on. He points out in the book that this particular uh, letter to the Church of Rome was written like a fundraising letter. And unlike the ones you see today, this is, let me give you a presentation of the gospel that I've been preaching so that you guys who might not even have a clue as to who I am, what I'm about. What did you guys could at least know what I've been teaching uh, down here in Jerusalem and elsewhere. That's good. Uh, because when he got to Rome, a lot of people didn't even know what he'd gone through. Then he gives an overview of the book. He broke the book down into, uh, I believe, three sections. The first, he explains what the issue of sin for the Gentile nation, which is all the various atrocities, you name it. <laughs> then he deals with the one that primarily found in the Jewish follower of the law, the Torah. Uh, nobody gets a free ride. <laughs> so if you're one of those, perhaps you're like me, you can say, 
Oh, I didn't do any of those stuff over there in this tour. I can't see. Well, you might want to take a better look at yourself, Will. It's called self-righteousness, thinking we're better than because we didn't. Uh, nice going, Doug. <laughs> He's right. And I appreciate that. Even if I'm not a Jewish follower of the tour, I could see that readily. <laughs> and then in the next section, the second one, it's kind of like a, a question and answer as he was put it, as he put, as Doug puts it, which I appreciate. It brings the fundamentals like, okay, let me give you an illustration of what it meant by we are justified by faith alone. Second, next chapter, the theology. Then he goes on to share, okay, answer the question like, gee, if I'm not under the law, do I get to do whatever I want? No, no, no. <laughs> Good answer, though. If you don't know, Calvinists believe, essentially believe that in eternal security or as some people call it, once saved, always saved. They firmly believe in that, that you will not lose your salvation. But as Doug correctly points out, it's not an excuse to uh, sin like the devil and do whatever they want without consequence. Uh, no. Uh, in fact, the Holy Spirit will be working you to, to encourage you to think as we should, or to be more and more like Christ. Thank you, Doug. Appreciate that. <laughs> uh, it was a good balance. Uh, because I mentioned that Doug is a Calvinist, you might be thinking, okay, did this guy torpedo free will? Not so fast, it seemed. I was waiting to see if he was going to do that. No. <laughs> Instead, what he did was say, uh, point out quite correctly, yes, we are free to make decisions, but it will, but it cannot uh, cause us to lose our salvation. <laughs> I like that train, uh, the idea of being, you're on a train, you're going, through the process of the sanctification, eventual glorification, but you can't get off that train, even if you think you can. No, because the Lord is sovereign. And sovereignty, that means God is basically saying, no, sorry, but I, you are going with me too uh, into the glory. Great. Uh, I was wondering how, but it didn't torpedo your ability uh, to screw up, but because God has his hand on us, uh, <laughs> not so fast, sonny boy. <laughs> Appreciate that touch. He also points out that uh, to his Calvinist uh, readers and listeners, there is an audio book uh, that they should chill out about Armenians saying, we got to get the gospel out there to everyone and do that. Great. Well, they're right. We do. We can't just, we're not called to sit on our rear and do nothing. We do need to share the good news of Christ. We do need to share and not worry about, okay, am I doing it? No. Thank you, Doug, for torpedoing that ball. <laughs> I have a feeling Doug is, is rightly at Leighton Flower pointed out in a different video that Doug is one of the more balanced of uh, brother in the face. <laughs> and I appreciate that quite a bit. Mm, brother. Sorry, folks. Uh, 
Now let's get on to Romans chapter nine. <laughs> I wasn't sure of exactly how Doug was going to handle this one. And he actually did it with a good measure of class, which is more than I can say for some Calvinists out there. <laughs> But then again, the man was writing this and he probably gave the presentation at a church like like I would expect from a, a pastor who has a rather prophetic bent. Mm, good. Uh, and I would agree. Guys, let's not worry about uh, the chicken or the egg. And he, I put the Esau part that is in there he was right to point out that that verse actually belongs in Malachi chapter 4, I believe it was. It wasn't at the birth of Esau. <laughs> but of course, God, being who he is, he could say something like that. And it put, became pretty clear, and I appreciate it, uh, Doug, meant, making it clear, it has a lot to do with the heart attitude that we will see all through the book of Genesis and later on in time. Hmm. So Esau may have repented and be uh, up in heaven, but we don't know that yet. And I appreciate that part of Doug Wilson as well. By the way, he goes on to suggest that Job might be a descendant of Esau. Hmm. So he's not. So Doug is not letting us get away with bull about uh, who is and who isn't. Bravo, Doug. <laughs> I told you, I was actually having fun and, and discovering some of this stuff. Now, I would not call Doug a dispensationalist. If anything, he'd probably, at best, a leaky this, this, as uh, John MacArthur is. I don't know. Uh, somebody from Canon or somebody who actually knows Doug, feel free to offer some correction, <laughs> even in a follow-up video of your own. <laughs> no problem. But that's the fun. And it's good that we do things. Here's another part, which I do appreciate Doug mentioning. And that's the issue of salvation. The key to salvation, yes, is to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. He says who, who says that he said who he is. You believe who he said he is. You believe that he died on the cross for sin, paid the price. Uh, he was buried and resurrected on the third day. He rose up and now was seated on the right hand of the Father, and he already paid the price of your sins and my sin. And we are simply to put our trust. And I appreciate the fact that I get to say, thank you, Jesus, for what you've done. I gladly appreciate and say yes to the gift of salvation. I'm glad Doug has enough brains to recognize that that is not me exercising pride in the fact that I get to say yes. No, it's simply my acknowledging that it was all Jesus, not me. <laughs> mm. And I'm going to get to the chapter which expounds a little more on that so soon enough. But there's another point that Doug also makes in his book. Uh, and those of you who are doctrinal purists are not going to like Doug for this one. You see, the person who has a, 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 if you are not placing your trust in Jesus, uh, but you got this great doctrinal theology, you got, oh, I taught this so theology, Calvinist theology, that's Doug's word, not mine. Guess what? You ain't going nowhere, but down. But the guy, maybe the charismatic, who, who simply believe in Jesus, trust him for salvation, his theology, mm, 
maybe not that great. And that a little too much. Guess what? He gets to go before because he's putting his trust in Jesus. It's not your theology that will save us. It's our trust in Jesus. What? Him alone. Mmm. Bravo, Doug! Bravo! <laughs> I wasn't, because of the, the demonstrated character, I'm not totally surprised. Uh, with, <laughs> and I'm glad he does that. Hmm. Probably because he's seen enough to know that he needed to say things like that. Bravo. Now, what about the, the situation with Israel? He, Doug apparently sees the church as a spiritual Israel, as that in that sense that we do have a lot in common. That's why he gives some warning and why he firmly and correctly believes we can really learn something. But um, I may have missed it, but it seems like he could have done a better job making it clear and distinct that the natural Israel has some things that we in the spiritual, the church, don't get, like the homeland that was promised again in, uh, in the Old Testament. And these other blessings of land and other things that was specifically for the Jewish people. All right. And I appreciate that. I kind of wish he been a little more clear on that, but oh well. But I appreciate the, what he has done. And he is not a fan of anti-Semitism. So good, good on that. <coughs> now, look, you're going to love well, uh, in Romans 12, 13, 14, and the rest of the, uh, of the book of Romans are more like the application. What do you do with all this theology? Whoopee, what do you do with all this uh, doctrine? Well, Doug is not afraid to say, yeah, we are supposed to put, uh, do uh, these and do those things, but they don't earn us, they don't uh, get us into heaven. That's all Jesus. But those deeds will attract other people and so on. I appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> I'd love to do a better under, get a better understanding of, of holiness because I'm kind of mm, on it and I need to do a study on it. I'm willing to acknowledge my own weakness but I also appreciate what he did <laughs> on that. And yes, we're not all called the same thing. Thank you, uh, Doug, for saying that we don't have to be clones of each other, but not so disjointed, that, but respect the differences that is in the body of Christ and that each one of us has something that the others need. Mm. So I can... I commend them for that. And oh, oh, as for 14, well, he did do a good job. I, I thought, well, probably because it was more me uh, wanting to have some fun. And I did do a, a video on Romans 14. And it is true. We're not to look down on our brothers and sisters who have a different opinion than us. And they are not to look down at us. We are not to act. We are to act with love uh, towards our brothers and sisters who are different than ourselves. Good. I know he didn't want to stray too far from the text. <laughs> otherwise, he'd have a, a long, otherwise I'd be listening to a whole new book. <laughs> All based on that. So I commend him for that. And how he handled uh, Romans uh, 15. <laughs> yeah, some challenges, but nothing dramatic. So I would encourage you, and I definitely had some fun. Am I going to sell them? No. But I'm not afraid to read a book like this where 
my ta- my thinking gets challenged a bit, and I would have to be encouraged. And my salvation, my confidence in what the Lord's doing and what and what and what actually only got strengthened because I'm reading somebody who was more interested in ministering and being a blessing than somebody who said, Oh, I gotta be doctrinally correct. No, he doesn't do that. Bravo, Doug. I commend him. And the only thing I had was, and the only reason I passed by that one small section in Romans 12 is because he is right. It can be easily applied to a book or an audio on 1 Corinthians. Oh boy. Hey Doug, if you're listening to this and you do decide to do a book, you could maybe start off with, am I in the right time zone here? Did I get transported 2,000 years in the future or what? <laughs> if you haven't read Corinthian, the first Corinthian, it's quite simple. It was church division, celebrity pastors, celebrity whatever, that is symbol and galore. <laughs> like, oh boy. <laughs> you think you were reading about what's happening today instead of, oh, so long ago. <laughs> I would love to see what he does with that. I'll have fun, even if I don't necessarily agree. <laughs> All right. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this. And I trust this video was a blessing and a help. And see you when I see ya.